Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about two-step linear equations. If you aren't already familiar with one-step equations, you might want to watch the last video before you get into two-step equations. In this video, we'll do a quick intro, cover equations with positive values, negative values, and fractions. You guys know I love my fractions. Not really. As always, we'll do three problem sets together for each section. I actually have four for the fraction section because it also includes cross multiplication. Then I have six more in each section for you to try out on your own. That's almost 30 problem and answer sets just in this video. Let's get started. These equations are called two-step equations because it takes two steps to solve them. For example, the one-step equation on the left only takes one step to solve the equation, which is subtracting one. But for the two-step equation on the right, you need to subtract one and divide by two in order to solve the equation. Regardless, your end goal and the steps to get there are always the same. It's to isolate X and figure out what number that letter X equals. Let's take a look at how we got the answer for that example in the intro. We still want to isolate X, however, let's just first focus on the numbers being added and subtracted. Just like before, we want to get all of the X's on one side of the equal sign and all of the numbers on the other side. In order to get rid of the plus one, we need to do the opposite and subtract one. And according to tip number two, we need to always do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So let's subtract one from the right side as well. When we put it all together, we get that 2x equals 4. So we don't quite have our final answer yet because there's still that 2 in front of the x. But you'll notice this looks just like a one-step equation. So we'll have to do tip number one and two again, and this time looking at the numbers being multiplied and divided. To get rid of the two that's being multiplied by x, we need to do the opposite and divide by two. Let's do it to both sides, and now we have our final answer, x equals two. Finally, we're at tip number three, check your answer. Technically, this is an optional step, but it's a good sanity check. Let's plug in our answer 2 for the x in the original equation. And we'll get that 2 times 2 plus 1 equals 5. When we simplify, this is the same thing as 4 plus 1 equals 5. And 5 equals 5, so we know we have the right answer. When you're checking your answer and you end up with something like 3 equals 4, or 10 equals two, like something that doesn't make sense, you know that you have the wrong answer because mathematically the number two does not equal the number 10. So you know you have to go back and check your work. And sometimes your mistake is actually made when you're checking your answers, so just watch out for that. All right, four X plus three equals two. We still want to do the same thing and isolate all of our x's on one side of the equal sign and all of our numbers on the other side. Just purely looking at the numbers being added, we need to get rid of the plus 3, and in order to do that, we need to do the opposite and subtract 3. When we put it together, we get that 4x equals negative 1. And now we're left with a one-step linear equation. So let's do tips one and two again, but this time we're looking at the numbers that are being multiplied and divided. We need to get rid of the four that's being multiplied by x, so we need to do the opposite and divide by four. When we put it all together, we'll get that x equals negative one over four. Let's always check our answer by plugging in our answer in the original equation. And we'll get that four times negative one fourth plus three equals two. That's the same thing as negative one plus three equals two. And two equals two, so we know we have the right answer. 
okay, we haven't seen an equation like this one before, but remember that isolating x means getting all of our x's on one side of the equal sign and all of the numbers on the other side. So you'll notice on the right side, we have four plus x. And in order to remove the plus x, we need to minus x. Always remember to do it to both sides. So we get that 4x equals 4. And here we just have another one-step linear equation. Looking at the numbers that are multiplied by x, we have 4 times x, so let's divide by 4. And we get that x equals 1. Let's check our answer by plugging it back in. For this equation, we need to plug in x in two spots. So we'll get that 5 times 1 equals 4 plus 1. When we simplify, we get that 5 equals 4 plus 1, 5 equals 5, and we know that x equals 1 is our correct final answer. I have six other practice problems you guys can try out on your own. I'll show you guys the solutions with steps written out in... All right, now we're working with negative values. We still want to isolate x and get all of our x's on one side and all of the numbers on the other side. So first, looking at the numbers that are being added and subtracted to x, we have 2x minus 1. So in order to get rid of that minus 1, we need to do the opposite and add 1. Of course, we'll do it to both sides. And when we put it all together, we get that 2x equals 6. Here we just have another one-step linear equation, and we're looking at the values that are being multiplied by x now. So in order to get rid of the 2x, which is the same thing as 2 times x, we need to do the opposite and divide by 2. Again, we'll do it to both sides. So we'll get that x equals 3. When we plug back in 3 into our original equation, we get that 2 times 3 minus 1 equals 5. That's the same thing as 6 minus 1 equals 5, and 5 equals 5, so we have the right answer. Next one, we have 6x minus 2 equals 13. We'll first look at the numbers being added and subtracted to x. In order to get rid of the minus 2, we need to do the opposite and add 2. Of course, we'll do it to both sides, and we get that 6x equals 15. This is just another one-step equation. We need to get rid of the 6 that's being multiplied by x. In order to do that, we need to do the opposite and divide by 6 on both sides. We'll get that x equals 15 over 6. This is our answer, but let's just simplify. We know that the GCF is 3, so our simplified answer is actually 5 over 2. Let's check our answer. And we'll get that 6 times 5 over 2 minus 2 equals 13. And when we simplify it, the 6 and the 2 cancel out, so we're left with 3 in the numerator. 15 minus 2 equals 13. And 13 equals 13, so we know we have the right answer. All right, we have our last one in this section. 3 minus 4x equals 5. We'll still work to isolate x, which means getting all of our x's on one side of the equal sign and all of our numbers on the other side. So 
So just looking at the numbers that are being added and subtracted, you'll notice that we have minus 4x. In order to get rid of that, we need to do the opposite and add 4x to both sides. So we get that 3 equals 5x plus 4x, and that's the same thing as 9x. Again, here we just have another one-step equation. And looking at the numbers that are being multiplied and divided by x, we have 9x, which is the same thing as 9 multiplied by x. So let's do the opposite and divide both sides by 9. So for our answer, we'll get that 3 over 9 equals x. Let's simplify the fraction. We'll get that 1 over 3 equals x. Let's check our answer by plugging it back in. I'm so sorry you have to do this, but when you plug it in, you get that 3 minus 4 times 1 third equals 5 times 1 third. 3 is the same thing as 9 over 3. With some quick fraction math, you'll get that 5 over 3 equals 5 over 3. And you know we have the right answer. Sometimes when I think I'm more likely to mess up checking my answer than actually solving for the answer, I won't actually plug my answer back in. I'll read you the original problem or just double check the steps that I've already done. Here are some more practice problems with subtraction. Answers in We made it to fractions. I still hate fractions. Okay. Our goal of isolating x still has not changed. We still need to get all of our x's on one side of the equal sign and all of our numbers on the other side. Since we have x over 4 plus 2, we need to do the opposite and subtract 2. Of course, we'll do it to both sides, so we have x over 4 equals 3 minus 2, which is 1. And now we're left with this one-step linear equation. So looking at the numbers that are being multiplied and divided by x, we'll notice that we have x divided by 4, so we need to do the opposite and multiply by 4. Of course, we'll do it to both sides. The 4s cancel out, and we're left with x. 3 times 4 equals 12, so we have that x equals 12. When we check our answer by plugging it back in, we get that 12 divided by 4 plus 2 equals 3. Wait, 3 plus 2 does not equal 3. 5 does not equal 3. This is why we check our answer. Okay, so we subtracted both sides by 2, so we got that x divided by 4 equals 1. Ah, okay. When we multiplied by 4 on both sides, the 4s do cancel out, except 1 times 4 equals 4. We made the mistake, correction, I made the mistake of multiplying 3 by 4 instead of 1 by 4, so the answer should have been x equals 4. When we plug in 4 for x in our original equation, we get that 4 divided by 4 plus 2 equals 3. 1 plus 2 equals 3. And 3 equals 3. So this time, we have the right answer. It's x equals 4. Next one, we have 2 minus x over 3 equals 7. Since the x is already on the left side, let's get all of our numbers on the right side. Because we have plus 2, let's do the opposite and subtract 2. We'll do it on both sides, so we get that negative x over 3 equals 7 minus 2, which is 5. And here we're just left with another one-step equation. So now, looking at the numbers that are being multiplied or divided by x, we have negative x divided by 3. Let's do the opposite and multiply by negative 3. 
the negative threes cancel out and five times negative three equals negative 15. So our answer is X equals negative 15. When we plug in our answer back into the original equation, we'll get that two minus negative 15 divided by three equals seven. And that's the same thing as two plus five equals seven and seven equals seven, so we have the right answer. If you guys are up for it, let's do some cross multiplication. Whenever you see a problem like this, where you have a linear equation with only fractions on both sides, you can do something called cross multiplication. This is when you basically multiply the numbers that are diagonal from each other. I'm just going to circle them here. When you cross multiply, you can do 2x times 3 and put it on one side, and 3 times 4 and put it on the other side. So we'll get that 6x equals 12. We ended up with another one-step equation. Since it's x times 6, we need to do the opposite and divide by 6. We'll get that x equals 2. When we plug in our answer, we get that 3 over 2 times 2 equals 3 over 4. And 3 over 4 does equal 3 over 4, so we have the right answer. I have no idea why cross multiplication works, but it's magical. I love it. I know we usually do three equations per section, but here's a bonus one, just because cross multiplication is a new concept. Here we have 3 over 2 equals 2x over 7. Because we only have fractions on both sides of the equation, we can cross multiply. And just drawing circles around the numbers that are diagonal from each other, we can do 2 times 2x, which equals 4x, and let's just put it on one side of the equal sign. And we can also do 3 times 7, which is 21, and put it on the other side. So we end up with 4x equals 21. Here, we're just left with another one-step linear equation. Since it's 4 times x, let's do the opposite and divide by 4. We'll get that x equals 21 over 4. When it comes to checking your answer, this is probably one of the ones where I wouldn't go back and plug back in my answer, just because there's so many fractions and it gets a little complicated. But what I will do is go back to the steps that we've already done and either check my work or I'll completely redo the problem and see if I get the same answer. For the people who do want to go back and check your answer by plugging it back in, I'll do it just for you guys. Here are some practice problems with fractions. This is probably the worst page out of the entire video, but it's always better to practice and screw up on your homework or practice problems than on an actual test. I'll show you guys the answers in... Done! Hope you guys finish your homework or test that's tomorrow morning. If this video helped you out, please help me out by pressing the like button, leaving a comment, especially on what topics to cover next, and subscribing. See you in the next video.